heart attack Fast fatal heart impact Past painful scars In fact, I blast tasteful bars and packs I back up my actions Fact, don't ask Grab reactions Jack attack with every word Then act with class As they hear me snap I got nothing to lose Cause I fought and felt the bruise Now I'm not the one confused Call the shots and they produce I ain't lost, I'm finally loose Pick a new so urge juice I need the views to boost me To a new abuse of being used Everybody wants a piece now Y'all can rest in peace now You're dead to me, so peace out Remember you're discreet now Get ready for defeat Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kiru Show here, and now, the reason why I am uploading part 2 of this series so early, basically the next day, is going to be quite simple, before anyone does ask. A lot of people are having a bit of confusion with psychopath and sociopath, so I'm going to try and clear this up the best that I can before I do begin. From doing a lot of my research, sociopaths, they, considerably they have no conscience. While a psychopath, they have a, well, the inability to tell right from wrong. These two are different. Whereas a psychopath, I believe, would be better at expressing emotions as little empathy, antisocial, or remorse, I do not believe a sociopath would be able to. They would still be able to find some feelings. However, their inability to understand them is what would motivate them. That is why they would be highly manipulative, liars, and they're very narcissistic. They don't understand anything. And they think that they're just too smart to understand it. That's also one of the reasons why they are spontaneous and highly competitive. Because they think if they do that, something will happen. It will either evoke a feeling inside their bodies, or their minds, or in the other person. Anyways, that is basically the difference. I want to say, there's a lot more. But I'm still doing a bit more research on it, since I'm trying to find the border between the two myself. I'm not 100% on it. Some of the things I said were probably wrong. Some of them were probably right. But anyways, with that out of the way, let's begin. Whenever we last left off, Izuka Midoriya. We just had him take a bunch of drugs from a drug dealer. He bought them off the man and simply began to experiment with them. He wanted to see what he could do with them. Since he began to feel a bit different. Now, Deku thinks a lot of himself. He thinks that, oh, these things, they either won't work on him or he'll find a new feeling. Something that could entertain him for a bit of time. Now, with that being said, he does go home and actually begin to test these out a bit more. He does want to know a bit more about the Cork Enhancer. It was the first thing he tried, and it was very interesting. However, before that, he does begin to take some of the other substances. Now, I could make a list or draw it up, but I really don't want to look into a lot of this stuff. Anyways, now, he begins to take certain drugs, which I believe if I were to try and name, I might be demonetized. Anyways, now, whenever he does begin to do this, he does get weird feelings, and he gets high, feeling different and actually experiencing a little bit of joy. His personality, or at least the narcissistic side, being thrown to the wind for a while. Until he does wake up, and the high wears off. Him, going like this for a couple days on repeat. Until he does run out of stuff, and actually just head back to the dealer. And spend some money. Now. With that being said, he also does want to test out the effects some of these things will have on other people. And one of the first things he thought about doing was testing it out on his mother. 
sense, she herself actually did begin to get a bit more paranoid. She was medicated by a doctor and giving some, given something that might help take the edge off, basically help her focus and keep these feelings at bay. Now, with that being said, Midoriya does actually sneak a tab of this drug into her cup of water. And she doesn't even notice it. Now, watching the way she behaves, it's very clear that she's having fun, or at least finding some enjoyment. Since she went from being basically all strict and proper to basically she's having a lot of fun, she's laughing, she's smiling, and she's chasing imaginary blood or bleh, imaginary butterflies. Now, with that being said, Midoriya, yeah, he's trying to get some of the harder stuff. And whenever he does run out of it, and he doesn't have any money, he goes out one night, deciding to have a bit of fun. Him taking on a blade, and simply just walking down the street. Messing with it in his hand, and actually just trying to understand things. It's really just becoming dull. The color is fading from his worlds. Why? It's strange. No one wants to talk with him at school. No one really wants to hang out with him. Ah, that's no fun. If I can't talk with them, I can't get them to do things I want. Ha. Ah. I guess it's really just... Hmm. Now, Midori does begin to think. And he does hear a commotion in an alleyway. He simply just begins to walk down and see what's going on. The man... In the, alley, in the alleyway, he's trying to mug someone for money. And Midori does come upon the sky, seeing what's going on. Before, the guy does spin around and see the kid, telling him to simply just back off or just to give him some cash. Midori not doing anything. He just brings the blade down to his left hand, saying to the man as he simply just puts it behind his back, that, why is he doing this? Why do you rob people? Jeez, kid. You don't understand. I need the money. Oh, really? How do you know I don't need the money? What are you trying to do it for? Do you have a kid at home? Are you trying to support them? Or do you have a bad habit? What? A bad habit? Are you an addict? You look like it. Especially with the way your teeth are. The guy going to run forwards and go towards Midoriya. As soon as he does get close to Midoriya, Midoriya throws up his left elbow, and he's able to hit the man in the very bottom of his fingers. And he sends the gun going up into the man's hand. He spun it down, his finger no longer on the trigger. Midoriya just slashed him across the chest with the knife. The man does throw out his other hand punching Midoriya directly in the face. Midoriya does actually take a step back, bringing his hand up and actually somewhat beginning to laugh. That was pain. A new feeling. Things that he hasn't felt before. Eventually, pain got boring. But this, this feels different. He wants to explore what this is. And Midoriya does just run forwards, lashing away and slashing with the knife wildly being able to hit the man in the leg, as the man does actually try and punch Midori across the face. Throughout all the commotion, the gun scattered. It's on the ground, and one of the two have kicked it. Now, the man, he's trying to fight against Midoriya, and Midoriya does one thing. Whenever the man does try and actually force the knife down into Midoriya's arm, Midoriya spits in his eyes, and is able to actually bite onto his hand. Now, eventually the two did roll over. 
and Midoriya was on top this time. And the man was trying to simply stop Midoriya. Who? He just backed up. He let the man throw him onto his feet. As soon as Midoriya got onto his feet, he grabbed a trash can lid and simply just smashed it into the man's side. Before picking up the trash can and just throwing it at him. Now, he was able to hit him with it, but he didn't get it fully airborne. He was barely able to pick it up and swing it. As, after a bit of time, Midoriya is eventually on top of the man, who is filthy, covered in garbage, and, well, bloody. Midoriya was able to cut into a part of his arm. Whenever he slashed down, he cut part of the man's muscle tendon. So, that arm was weaker, and Midoriya exploited that weakness, and killed the man. That was really fun, and he does actually begin to smile and laugh a bit. He feels genuinely happy. He feels like he can actually just express himself this way. Why don't pe more people do this? It's fun. It's amazing. Midoriya having to get up and actually run off. Whenever he does actually hear some people beginning to arrive. Now, whenever that does happen, Midoriya, he's aware of what he did. He murdered a man and that's considered to be bad against the law. So he can be arrested if he is found here. Along with the fact that he already does have drugs in his backpack. Now, with that, Midoriya does do this sometimes. He does sneak out at night occasionally and go out and kill people. Random people. And, eventually, it became different. He was simply just getting cash from someone who he needed it from. Now, whenever he did get cash from them, he simply just killed them. He didn't care. He has what he needs from them, and now they're useless. He could let them live, but they saw his face. And that's no fun. He won't be able to do what he does if he's behind bars. Now, roughly about three months have passed. And Midoriya, doing this for some time, he... Well, this is the, in the middle of the day. You do have the fact that he's studying and actually trying to go to UA. His grades have somewhat begin to slip, but it doesn't really matter. As long as he doesn't fall below, well, I want to say a C or a, a C or a D, he'll be fine. So, for what he's doing right now, he needs to stay on it, stay on top of his grades. And he does begin to head home. However, this time, there is another villain attack. And you do have Kamari Woods in Mount Lady. Along with some other heroes trying to handle it. Now, Midoriya does actually try to run, from the front, run to the front of the line. And try to see what is going on. Whenever he sees that it's some sort of low-level villain, or simply just... A random villain with a random cork, he does want to try and step in. He wants to see if he can make any difference. If he can make a difference in that, then hey, he can at least have some people sharing on that he can be a hero. And he starts to get his blood pumping. Along with that, he does try and drop his personality for a second, trying to somewhat throw away his narcissis narcissism and say that he believes that he can help. A lot of people are trying to pull him back, and telling him that it's not safe. However, All Might does arrive, and he blows the villain away. This being quite surprising. He came in and took down the villain in a few seconds, where other heroes were struggling. Now, after that is done, Midoriya does actually run over to All Might, and try to ask him a question. All Might, saying of course he'll give the boy an autograph, what is his name? Midoriya, throwing that to the wind, 
saying that he kind of doesn't care about that. He wants to know if he can be a hero with his, well, power. Well, young man, what is your quirk? I don't have one. That's the thing. I can be the first quirkless hero, right? Since they did over, well, overrule that law. So it can be a thing, right? Well, no, young man. I don't believe so. You're lying. You're lying to me. Of course there can be quirkless heroes. It doesn't make any sense why there can't be. Young man, listen to me and listen to me well. All my getting surprisingly serious. Almost catching Midoriya off guard. All might then, somewhat almost screaming at Midoriya, that being a pro hero is a very, very serious job. And that if he wanted to be a pro, he would either have to train lifetimes or simply just give up on his dream. There is no way for him to be a hero. He cannot do anything without a quirk. Just get a normal job and live a normal life. The life of a hero is not one for him. Now, with that, All Might, yeah. He basically said to Midoriya what he would have said to Midoriya in canon if he actually wanted to shatter his dreams. Now, with that, that actually does somewhat break Midoriya. He believed that he could be a hero. It's a thing every kid aspires to be. So what if he doesn't have a quirk? He can still try. He'll be the best damn hero ever. That's just it. He'll do it. No one can stop him. However, there is right now. And Midoriya does actually begin to tear up and cry. He thought he could be a hero. And eventually he does go home. As soon as he does get home, Inko is surprised to see her son in tears and crying. Now, with that, Midoriya, whenever he does actually get home, he does one thing. He injects himself with that Cork Enhancer stuff. The guy said that he made it stronger this time. So he just wants to feel that high. And whenever he does inject it, he doesn't feel anything. So he injects another one. And it works. It hits him. Now, Midoriya did not wait. It takes a second for it to kick in. And he just shot up twice. As he begins to hallucinate. And have some strange visions. Now. Midoriya, he does lay on his bed, and so he just begins to look up at the world. The world is made of pink flames, along with purple and blue, and red. It's all just beautiful looking. And as he is looking up, he watches as his hands actually do catch on fire. And so just staring at them, they look beautiful, they look amazing. Him beginning to smile. And he does actually feel something. Feel something a little different. Before, he does pass out in his bed. And wake up a couple hours later. Going to actually check his bag. And his stash. The stash that he keeps in his room. It's empty. Along with his bag. However, his door is locked. Shit, that means that that was the last he had of it. Now, with that being said, Midoriya does sneak out and go to get more. He roughly has roughly enough for usually twice what he gets. So they're going to be paying, well, he's going to be paying good money for it. Now, Midoriya does actually begin to walk by. And as he is there, Whenever he arrives to their usual spot at the park, something else is going on. Whenever the guy he expects to be there isn't there, he begins to look around, and he does hear a bit of commotion, eventually finding a scene. There is his dealer. The guy, he is in a pool of blood along with what looks to be someone sitting on top of his chest. 
and they're throwing their hands overhead and bringing a knife down, or at least an object. Midoriya walking up and trying to see what's going on. As soon as he does walk past Toga, she looks up surprised at him. She didn't even realize he was there. Midoriya completely ignoring her and picking up the backpack, unzipping it and seeing what exactly he has inside, and pulling something out. Exactly what I needed. I don't care what you do with his body. At least hide it well. Wait, you're not surprised, are you? Why should I be? I do the same thing. Really? Exactly why do you do it? Is it because of your quirk? You like blood, don't you? Hmm, I guess so. It's new to me. Then again, hurting people is fun. I can tell you like to do it. This man, though, he was useful to me. He helped make things a bit more fun. Really? Like what? He was a drug dealer. Yeah, but at least he gave me a little bit of a discount. <sighs> Midoriya is simply just looking through the bag. And finding a notebook. This all looks... Hmm. Wait a minute, this is how you make this stuff. Midoriya flipping over the page. Quirk Enhancer. The ingredients listed... Some of them are easy to get. Others are a little bit harder and trickier. Along with that Midoriya, he just simply looks at Toga. And she is there just throwing the blade in between her hands before just stepping down. And Midoriya asks her if she would like to come along with him. Why? As far as I know, you're going to turn me in. Oh, really? Besides, I'm the one with the knife here. So, I'm in control. Yeah, how about I do this? Midoriya just pulling out a knife. Before, putting the blade in his mouth and pulling up his sleeve. Asking Toga about her quirk as he pulls out the knife. It has something to do with blood, right? Yes, it does. Well then. Midoriya just slicing his wrist, and you can clearly see that he winces in pain. Before Simi just saying that he does this to entertain himself, and Toga watches the blood stream from Midoriya's wrist and hit the ground. There. Look at that. Ah. Still not used to that. I don't think I ever will be. But. I'm corkless. So, this is now going to be a crime scene if it was found. Not only will you, you probably leave DNA behind, but I most definitely did. So let's say that we hide the body in the forest real quick, and quite simply, get out of here. And at least spray down some water. Does that make sense? Uh, okay. Well, he, my name's Himiko Toga. Hmm. Izuku. However, most people just call me Deku. Wait, you mean like you can do anything? No. The other one. Useless. Then again, all might call me useless. Oh, uh, so sorry. Don't be. Besides... If I was useless, I wouldn't be here right now. Helping you pull this body, Doria says as they finally pull it further. And we're able to get the body free of a rock or at least a branch it may have gotten stuck on. Now, that is whenever they do go back and actually at least clean out the area as much as they can. Now, with that being said, they do leave, split up, and at least exchange numbers. Midoriya, well, he thinks he's just found someone new to play with. Well, Toga, yeah. 
the guy was pretty interesting. He didn't care what she was doing, and he didn't even really care for her quirk. It all just seemed so natural to him. However, she's just trying to think. His blood. The way it flowed from his wrist. It looked natural. And he was just watching it as if he was watching a water... Wa bleh, watching a waterfall. So natural. He's clearly done this before, hasn't he? Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing night. Excuse me. I'll catch you guys in the next part.